In this video, we have a story about someone who smoked brake cleaner. Do not smoke chemicals, and obviously you shouldn't repeat any of the dangerous activities that you see people doing in compilations. Hopefully that goes without saying, and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm a mechanic, and once I got so angry at a car that I smoked brake cleaner. I'm an occasional smoker, and on this day my zippo was dry from sitting around. I was too impatient to find another lighter, so I soaked the cotton in brake cleaner. Brake cleaner burns, therefore brake cleaner is fuel. When I went to light up my cigarette, I saw that the zippo was putting off some thick black smoke. I was too angry to care. I smoked many more cigarettes that day with that same zippo. I was coughing a bit more than usual that day, but no lasting damage. I have no idea what was in that brake cleaner. We still have the barrel, but at this point, I don't want to know. This is awful. This is so awful. If you had the wherewithal to know that this is a bad idea, you probably shouldn't have done it. Ten years ago, I was in high school, preparing for the National Chemistry Olympiad with several fellow students. We were learning to perform a solid phase reaction involving heating the ingredients in a beaker with a Bunsen burner. I forgot the exact temperature, but the iron ring stand holding the beaker was red hot during the reaction. That was when I heard a fizzle sound, followed by an ouch from the guy next to me. He was trying to make the flame centered at the beaker by moving the red hot ring stand with his bare hands. He thought if it's not red, it's not hot so gloves are not needed when touching the not red parts. Big mistake. But not the scariest part of the story. Remember I mentioned a fizzle sound after he touched the hot stand? While he was cooling his burnt finger under cold water, I witnessed him putting his fingertip into his mouth and biting it. I asked, did you just chew off your own barbecued flesh? Yes, just a tiny bit, two millimeters across, but it's your own flesh. Yep, and it is tasty also. Luckily, he made a speedy recovery, won a bronze medal in the Olympiad months later, and went on to get his bachelor's degree in chemistry. And his story has been my go-to party story ever since. Yeah, that's cool and all, but have you ever seen live-action cannibalism in front of your own eyes? Edit. Jack in the comments mentioned that the USNCO only uses hot plates. The actual contests in my country also haven't involved open flames for decades. But for some reason, the coaches in my team thought, yeah, maybe we should prepare a dangerous one just in case. And to be fair, it taught us always to wear proper PPE and use your friggin' brain in labs. I think if you burn your hand in the lab, the last thing you should be doing is eating your own skin. Normally, I would avoid getting chemicals on your skin just so you could protect yourself, but if you're ingesting said potentially contaminated skin, that's even worse. I'm not a chemist, but I work in my university's engineering lab, so as I'm going through making sure the computers are off, or logged out, I hear a massive explosion, like big enough to knock loose ceiling tiles. As I rush into the room the blast came from, I see two other students on the floor, one bleeding from a chest wound, so I race to get my bag. It has an IFAK, individual first aid kit, on it, so I can start stabilizing him as I call 911 for both of them. The other guy has burns all over his upper body. After they were taken to the hospital, I started cleaning up what happened, and they were doing a senior project on phase change in water and were collecting data points of pressure and temperature and had just got back from lunch after leaving their experiment running, and it had superheated the steam over 900 psi. We don't know the actual pressure, because the pressure sensor only accurately read to 800 psi, but shortly after they came back to the lab, it exploded like a grenade, sending huge pieces of glass across the lab and cracking a cinder block where the metal half hit the wall. They both survived with no long-term injuries except minor hearing loss. There were no safety features on their test rig, basically making it into a steam-powered pipe bomb, that is so scary. They are fortunate that you were trained in first aid and had an individual first aid kit ready to help them out when things went wrong. I did this at about the age of seven with a pint bottle and isopropanol. I just had a small amount and would shake it up to increase the vapor. I got first and second degree burns on my hand from that misadventure. I would also take Christmas ornaments, very thin glass ones, fill them with butane from a lighter, then light them producing an impressive little rocket. Occasionally, I could get one to fly a few feet and shatter on impact. So I thought, why not scale this up? Not my best day, but I learned a few lessons. The burnt hand teaches best. And while that which does not kill you makes you stronger, it will probably hurt like hell. I developed an interest in less painful methods and techniques. I can definitely imagine you would. There's an expression about what scientists do. Fuck around, find out. When I was a kid, I used to put a tiny amount of acetone in plastic bottles and light them so they would fire off like rockets. One day, it was really windy, so I held a hand over the end and held the lighter really close to the nozzle. Whoosh! A jet of flame shot out and burnt a quarter-sized hole in my skin between my thumb and pointer finger. Fun times. <laughs> that does not sound like a fun time to me, and a quarter-sized hole between your pointer finger and thumb sounds like quite a large hole. Definitely, yikes. Ah yes, try nitro finger. I remember I bought a small bottle of glycerin from the pharmacy to make some spicy oil. 
I stored the glycerin for a couple of months, and when I decided to use it, I found solids in it. A quick search says glycerin freezes at 16 degrees Celsius or lower temps depending on the concentration. Turns out there was cosmetic additives in it not included in the ingredients for some reason. So when I added it to the nitration mix, it instantly poofed into a shit ton of nitrogen dioxide, and the mixture turned black. Thankfully, I had full PPE and some thick-ass gloves. I instantly quenched it in ice water and never did spicy glycerin again. It is probably wise to avoid making trinitro finger or any other explosive compounds, such as spicy oil. Phenols. I've known a few. A plastic antioxidant additive contains a phosphate ester, bonded to three terp butyl phenols. I am always so worried about phosphate derivatives because they just look like nerve gases. If you asked me to tell the difference between something that's a nerve agent and not a nerve agent, I couldn't tell. I would just stay away from all phosphate analogs. We had a process that recovered diterpbutyl phenol from the reaction bottoms. The material was vacuum distilled in very large batches. The product cut was determined by sampling the overhead product and checking the melting point. I did this via the high-tech method of grabbing the sample in a small beaker and stirring it with a thermometer while it cooled. This method was good and the final GC check was always good. During the melting point check, I wore gloves and was generally careful not to get any of this on me, although some waxy product got here and there. One time, I managed to get some of the material on my hand and fingers. Can you see where this is going? I managed to transfer some product accidentally to my man parts. At first it burned, then it went numb. The sensation was like lidocaine to the power of three. Not painful per se, but very concerning. By the end of the shift, I could feel the end of my dick again. It was a good lesson that taught me to always wash before taking a leak. There are many stories like this that I've told in these compilations so far, and I don't know why people have such poor hygiene practices. Definitely concerning to say the least. In high school, we had to do an experiment to oxidize a nail with hydrogen peroxide. We put a nail inside a test tube with the oxidizer, and the teacher told us we could shake it around a few times to reactivate the reaction. Now what happens if you shake a test tube up and down with a nail inside of it? You guessed it, the nail goes through and the chemicals spill everywhere. In the end it wasn't too bad, but the lesson ended up in a bunch of broken glassware. I can't stop myself from cringing every time I remember that, but oh well. We also had one instance where we were working with pure alcohol as a solvent, and one of my dumb classmates took a sip of it, because, you know, it's only alcohol. He tried hard to act normal the rest of the day, but in the end, he was fine. So in one of the labs I worked in, they would get their solvent refilled from chem stores. And so this included ethanol in these big metal containers. And they always had to have it signed off and go through this extra security theater because apparently people had ordered four liters or more before, and then it went missing. I wonder if they'll ever figure out where it went missing to. Dry ice is fun, it is also dangerous, and incredibly loud if you put it in a resealable container. It will freeze skin almost instantly. In contact with metal, the intense cold causes the metal to contract so rapidly it screams. This impresses the children, dogs, and superstitious people of all ages. I occasionally get several pounds for free, because some things are shipped in it, and the store workers don't want to handle it. I have made cloud chambers for the grandkids, which impressed them. Even more entertaining for them was simply making bubbling water with a smoky vapor. My dogs were unimpressed, however. Adding soap makes a lot of smoky bubbles, which the grandkids found even more intriguing. The dogs remained unimpressed. Putting crushed dry ice in empty plastic drink bottles impressed the dogs and grandkids, along with the neighbors and the responding deputy who just told me to knock it off, even if it was the 4th of July. I was tempted to switch to carbide, but the neighbors were already upset. I was outclassing their expensive fireworks, and I was already on the local constabulary's radar. You would think they would be used to earth-shaking explosions by now, but no, accounting for other humans it seems. Perhaps it is time for another Banshee incident, this time with smoking foam that also glows. Anyone have large amounts of TCPO for cheap? We did this experiment in high school where we put dry ice in a bottle and it explodes and we did it in a garbage can so that it was safe. But people always do this. People will put dry ice or liquid nitrogen in a glass bottle and it explodes and it puts glass everywhere. People always think they'll get away in time, and sometimes these things don't go off, and so people go and they try and check it, and they could just go off so easily. It's a really dangerous thing to do, and if you're going to do anything with explosions, make sure you do it safely, because you or someone else could get seriously injured, and what's the cost of not being stupid? I originally recorded this video as a Patreon exclusive, but will gradually be releasing them on the channel as extreme compilations. These are the names of the people on Patreon who supported the channel during the month that this video was originally recorded. If you want to have your name at the end of a future extreme compilation, you can support the channel on Patreon using the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.